Ayat al-Kursi is the greatest verse in the Quran. The Prophet emphasized the significance of the verse to the companions as well as to us. But surprisingly, even Satan himself had appeared to advise us to hold on to Ayat al-Kursi. In this episode of The Good News, I'm going to share with you eight recommended times for reading Ayatul Kursi. Coming up. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to a new episode in the good news from Al Bushra by G Salam. This episode branches from the previous episode seven reasons you should start reading Surah Al-Baqarah right away. The fact that you've tuned in to watch this is a likely indication that you were convinced after watching the previous one to review your relationship with Surah Al-Baqarah and start reading it more often than you are used to doing. If however you haven't yet watched that episode then I suggest that you go and watch it and come back to join us to continue with this episode. The link is below in the description. Don't you worry, we are going to wait for you right here, right here. All right, welcome back. Literally, Ayatul Kursi is an Arabic word which means the verse of the mighty throne or the verse of the throne. It's called so because there is a mention of the word throne, Kursi, in it. And Kursi or the mighty throne refers to the mighty throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, Ayatul Kursi is verse number 255 in Surah Al-Baqarah. In fact, the entire Surah Al-Baqarah was revealed in Medina except one verse and that is verse number 281, not Ayatul Kursi. But it is not known the exact occasion for which Ayatul Kursi was revealed or descended. Now, before we move on to discussing the eight recommended times for reading Ayatul Kursi, how exactly do we read Ayatul Kursi? We read Ayatul Kursi in two different forms. In the form of Quran or in the form of Dhikr, remembrance. When we read it in the form of Quran, then one of the ways you can read it is as follows. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم صدق الله العظيم However, when you want to read it as dhikr which is applicable to the recommended times suggested in this episode then you can read it as follows Allah la ilaha illa hu 
الحي القيوم أو الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤوده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم Allah, there is no deity except Him, the living, the sustainer of all existence. Neither slumber nor sleep overtakes Him. To Him belongs whatsoever is in the heavens and whatsoever is on the earth. Who is it that can intercede with Him except by His permission? He knows all that is before them and all that is behind them. They can grasp only that part of His knowledge which He wills. His throne extends over the heavens and the earth, and their upholding does not weary him. He is the sublime, the Almighty One. A close contemplation of the meaning of Ayatul Kursi leads one to establish a greater and stronger concept of oneness of Allah, Tawheed, in his heart. He will also put his trust fully in Allah more than ever knowing that he is the ever living and the sustainer of all that is in existence knowing that neither slumber nor sleep overtakes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing that none can intercede with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without his permission and knowing that the mighty throne of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone encompasses the heavens and the earth with that all the fears of the believer narrow down to the fear of allah rejecting him and not accepting his good deeds now what are the eight recommended times for reading ayatul kursi the first recommended time for reading ayatul kursi is after the five times daily obligatory prayers. This is because the Prophet says in a hadith, Man qara'a ayat al kursiyi fi duburi kulli salatin maktubah, lam yamna'ahu min dukhul al jannati illa an yamut. The only thing that prevents him who reads ayat al kursi after every obligatory prayer from entering paradise is that he dies. One interesting thing about this recommended time is that you can only achieve it when you are punctual in your daily prayers and there is no shortcut to this the second recommended time for reading ayatul kursi is when you are set to go to sleep at night there is an interesting story through which we learn about this and it comes from the narration of Sayyiduna Abu Huraira who experienced the story himself when Rasulullah employed him to be in charge of Zakat al-Fitr. And one night, a man sneaked in and started stealing from the foodstuff of the Zakat al-Fitr. Abu Huraira caught the man and said, I'm going to send you to the Prophet and the man claimed that he was in dire need and he had a big family to take care of and he really pleaded to Abu Huraira to release him. Abu Huraira felt pity for the man considering what he presented and the man left. The next morning Abu Huraira met Rasulullah and the Prophet asked him what did your captive do last night? Abu Huraira narrated that the man claimed he had financial problem and a big family to take care of and he felt pity for the man and then he let go of the man the prophet wasalam, said he had told you a lie and he shall return abu huraira says the moment the prophet wasalam, said that the man will return he became certain that the man shall return and true enough the man returned that, that very night and then abu huraira saw him and then he arrested him again and then told him, I'm going to send you to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, here you are again. 
Again, the man claimed that he had a big family to take care of. He repeated the same old story. Abu Hurairah let go of him, soft-hearted person. And the next morning, when he met Rasulullah wasallam, the Prophet wasallam, asked him, what did your captive do last night? Abu Hurairah repeated to him the same story the man related to him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smiled and said, He has lied to you and he will return. True enough, the man returned for the third night. And Abu Huraira arrested him and said, This is the last time you have been here and I'm going to send you to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's no way out for you. It seemed the man was a very smart guy. So he pleaded to Abu Huraira and said to him, do you mind if I teach you something that will benefit you? Curious, hearing about knowledge, Abu Huraira said, why not? What is it? He said, when you are going to sleep at night, make sure you read Ayatul Kursi. And then he read Ayatul Kursi from the beginning to the end, just like we did earlier. And then he said, if you do this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assign a guard upon you throughout the night and the devil will never ever approach you throughout that night. Abu Huraira took the knowledge and let go of the man. The next morning, which is the third morning, he met the Prophet wasallam, and the Prophet asked him, Okay, Abu Huraira, yeah, tell me, what did your captive do last night? And then he narrated the story to the Prophet wasallam, and told him that the man actually told, asked him, to allow him to teach him something that will benefit him. The Prophet asked him, what is it? He told him that, he said, if ever I'm going to sleep at night, I should read Ayatul Kursi. And when I do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assign an angel to guard me, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assign a guard to guard me throughout the night. And the devil or the Satan will never ever approach me or come near to me. The Prophet sallallahu said, Sadaqa wa huwa kathub. He has said the truth, although he is a perpetual liar. He is a liar in nature. Then the Prophet sallallahu asked Abu Huraira, Did you know who you have been interacting with for the past three nights? Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, Allahu wa rasooluhu a'lam. Allah and his messenger know best. Then the Prophet sallallahu said, Innahu Shaitan. He is Satan. So now that the Prophet وسلم, has endorsed this information which Abu Huraira has received from Shaitan, then we are actually can make use of it and we are recommended to make use of it whenever we go to sleep at night. The third and fourth recommended times for reading Ayatul Kursi is once in the morning and once in the evening. Once in the morning, anytime after Fajr prayers, all the way until sunrise. Once in the evening, anytime after Asr prayers, all the way until sunset, Maghrib. And we learn this from a story that occurred to Sayyiduna Ubay ibn Ka'ab. Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu anhu narrates that his father, Ubay ibn Ka'ab, used to have a vessel which contained a lot of dates. And then he noticed that the dates in the vessel used to decrease. So one night he decided to keep eye on the vessel. While he was doing that, he saw a beast. This beast looked like human in an adolescent age, in a young age, a, child, a small child. So Ubay ibn Ka'ab approached the beast and said, Salam to the beast, Salam alaikum, and the, that creature actually responded to him. He asked him, Who are you? Are you a human being or, 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 or jinn? And then the beast responded that I am jinn. And then Ubay ibn Ka'ab asked him to show him his hand. So he showed, he extended his hand to Ubay ibn Ka'ab. Ubay ibn Ka'ab looked and then he found that the hand looked like the hand of a dog and the fur on the hand also was a fur of a dog. Ubay ibn Kaaba asked him, do all jinn or do all jin, does all jinn kind look like you? Of course, he was a smart creature, so he escaped answering this question, but he told him, the jinn kind knows 
that they don't have anyone stronger than I am, than he, he, he is. So wait, when Kaaba asked him, now how do we seek protection against you? He told him, every morning you read that verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayatul Kursi, and then you will be protected until the evening. And every evening, read that verse again, and you will be protected through, until the next morning. Ubay ibn Ka'ab went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama and related his encounter to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sadaq al khabif The devil has said the truth, which endorses that the Muslim is recommended to read Ayatul Kursi once in the morning and once in the in the evening even if you have read it right after your obligatory prayer in the morning which is fajr it doesn't mean that you cannot read it again in your morning and evening as care and also even if you have read it in your after your answer prayer it doesn't mean that you cannot read it again in your among your morning and evening as care the fifth recommended time for reading ayatul kursi is when one is spiritually disturbed and reading ayatul kursi for oneself or another who is spiritually disturbed is called ruqya and we all know that anyone can make ruqya for himself or for his loved one and in fact in, it is even recommended that everyone does ruqya for himself don't seek anyone else's help unless you really not you are not in the position of reading it or unless the situation is really severe but here even though everyone can read Rukia for himself I must warn that yes everyone can read Rukia or is even encouraged to read Rukia for himself but not everyone can actually read Rukia for another person so easily let me put it this way if someone is not punctual in his daily five days prayers or he has everyone knows himself better or he or he has hidden sins that he commit between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most of the time then he should excuse himself from doing ruqya to a third to a second person or a third person this is because when someone is in this situation or this status he is very vulnerable maybe he's already actually been disturbed spiritually without him realizing yes he can do ruqya for himself but if he attempts to do ruqya for another person because he's vulnerable and he can easily be penetrated he may be possessed and disturbed even further and further experience has proven this so this is a word of advice. The sixth recommended time for reading Ayatul Kursi is when there is a home or a house which is spiritually disturbed or occupied by jinn. Ayatul Kursi as we all know is part of Surah Al-Baqarah which means reading Surah Al-Baqarah in a home will definitely kick out any devil or any evil spirits in the house. It also means reading Surah Al-Baqarah suffices reading Ayat Al-Kursi. But the opposite is not correct, meaning just because I read Ayat Al-Kursi in the house, it, doesn't, it is not enough for me and it does not suffice me reading Surah Al-Baqarah. If you read Surah Al-Baqarah in your home, then you don't need to specifically read Ayat Al-Kursi. But if you read Ayat Al-Kursi alone, it's not enough. And does not suffice the need for you to read Surah Al-Baqarah in your house. The seventh recommended time for reading Ayat Al-Kursi is a very interesting one. It's in your nightmares. Who among us has never had a dream whereby he saw himself or a nightmare where he sees where he saw himself being chased by a scary creature, by a beast, by you can say a ghost found himself in a very scary situation falling from a very high uh, place going down and then he was screaming and then suddenly he found himself reading something from the Quran 
zikr from dua or most of the time ayatul kursi the, the the reality is you are inspired in this kind of situation although it is in your dream although it is in your sleep but sometimes it is real you are inspired to read whatever you read unconsciously based on what you do in your real life on or based on what based on what you are used to read in your real life if you are used to reading quran surah al-fatiha al-baqarah ayat al-kursi istighfar salah upon the prophet وسلم, then this is what will likely pop up in your dream to to rescue you so ayat al-kursi if we make it part of our life inshallah it will come there to intercede and rescue us if we ever have to go through nightmares inshallah and the last recommended time for reading ayatul kursi is any other time yes any other time you can try to repeat ayatul kursi for the whole day if you want and i can promise that you will feel different and you might even see different things so ayatul kursi you can read ayatul kursi any other time when you have the time and the free to do that i would like to share with you coincidentally when i published an article on this a few days ago uh, a brother came in and commented that he actually had recently established a love with making salah upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but after reading the article he thinks he will re replace that with reading ayatul kursi my suggestion for this brother was like this Salah upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is significant Reading Ayatul Kursi is significant And the Muslim needs both of them in different places because each of them have different objectives Of course Salah upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is just like any other dhikr if, if someone comes and say I have been consistent with this particular zikr and now i want to replace it with ayatul kursi after reading your article or watching your video i will still tell him that particular zikr is significant ayatul kursi is also significant each of them have different objective to serve in your life and the good thing is there are prescribed times for us to read ayatul kursi Likewise, there are also prescribed times for us to read Salah upon the Prophet Wasallam. In our prayers, we read Salah upon the Prophet Wasallam. Even in the morning and evening, just like Ayat al-Kursi, we are also encouraged to make Salah upon the Prophet Wasallam. So, for this particular brother, I told him, I will recommend that you do your Ayat al-Kursi, um, the first one, five times after, uh, uh, in, uh, after your five obligatory prayers daily you do your ayatul kursi in the morning in the evening you do your ayatul kursi before you go to sleep these are already uh, four times or five times other than that you can spend your time doing salah upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam unless you find that a reading ayatul kursi all the time actually saves you from a sickness you are experiencing then that becomes a treatment all together so i hope this is also helpful to anyone who might come across this video inshallah ta'ala now what if someone says i don't think i need to read ayat al kursi the way you guys are recommending it in your articles or videos well i will say if one chooses not to read ayat al-kursi it's either he believes or he doesn't believe that ayat al-kursi is part of the quran that means there are two possibilities if he believes that ayat al-kursi is part of the quran and yet he chooses not to read it then he is safe the rest is just a matter of choosing to read or not to read but if he doesn't believe that Ayat al-Kursi is part of the Qur'an, then he must be reminded that a Muslim cannot deny a single letter in the Qur'an, let alone a word or an entire verse, and let alone the greatest verse in the Qur'an. If he believes in Ayat al-Kursi but chooses not to read it, 
the world will not come to an end but he will deprive himself from at least two important things number one he will deprive himself from the reward of the recommended the first recommended time for reading ayatul kursi whoever reads ayatul kursi after the five times obligatory prayers will grant be granted easy or free access to jannah so if someone chooses not to read ayatul kursi for whatever reason he is actually depri depriving him depriving 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 he is actually depriving himself from this and the next thing he is depriving or he causing himself is that he is making himself vulnerable to spiritual attacks and if that happens it's a choice that one makes in his life especially that the prophet wasallam, has taught us to to do it one may have permissible alternatives for example someone will say I will not read Ayatul Kursi because I can do other dhikr or other dua, dua which are from the Quran and from the Sunnah. Fine. It is fair. But the reality is that those or anyone who has permissible alternatives will still embrace Ayatul Kursi. For example, when someone says, I will only stick to Salah upon the Prophet wasallam in the morning or in all times. These people, usually, they will also read Ayatul Kursi after prayers. They will also read Ayatul Kursi before they go to sleep. When you want to go to sleep, the recommended thing to read is Ayatul Kursi. And it's not Salah upon the Prophet wasallam. for example. So these are the things, if someone chooses not to read Ayatul Kursi and he wants to stick to an alternative thing, we should remind him that those who have alternatives, still have Ayatul Kursi as part of their alternatives. With that, we have come to the end of this episode. If you have watched to this point, please, I would like to plead to you to subscribe to this channel, Al Bushra by G Salam. Hit the like button on this video if you find it useful and beneficial. And do comment. I need these three things not for anything, not for myself, but for the channel to grow. And this is the only way you and I can help the channel to grow. If you watch it and find it beneficial and just put it aside, the channel will remain very small as it is. But if you subscribe or you like and comment or share it even with your loved ones, that's the only way the channel can, can grow. And together we reap the rewards and together we go to Jannah inshallah ta'ala. Until our next episode, in the good news, I leave you in Allah's protection. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.